What is going on guys, it's your boy JP, and today what I have for you is another Black Ops 3 commentary. What I'm going to be talking to you guys about today is how to play S&D or Search and Destroy. Now, Search and Destroy is a game mode that most people in Call, Call of Duty and competitive Call of Duty struggle with because it is very hard to learn how to play correctly. Most people, they just run and gun in Search and Destroy, and that's not really how you play Search and Destroy. Search and Destroy is all about outthinking the enemy setting up right and communicating and playing well with your teammates now what do i mean about outthinking the enemy by that i pretty much mean playing smart most people when they run into to search and destroy they don't play smart they think it's just you plant the bomb and you try and kill people that's not at all how you play search and destroy by, by playing smart i mean you know you got to predict where the enemy is you have to Think about if you do a certain thing, like if you go up that alley, is there going to be a guy camping around the corner? Or um, is it going to expose you too much? Is your teammate going to be exposed? Are you leaving him without help? Another thing is setting up for trades. Are you close enough to your teammate that if he dies or gets into a gunfight, you're going to be able to help him and pick up the trade? One thing that's very important in Search and Destroy is reading your enemies. By reading your enemies, I mean predicting, right? So. One way to do that is you can try and put it like it's as if you were the enemy. What would you do if they were the enemy? How would you go about a certain situation? Let's say there's a two v it's a two v two. It's you and your partner versus two other guys on the other team, right? You can be thinking, how would I play this if I were them and I was trying to plant the bomb? You can even say. What is the most common thing that people do when it's a 2v2 and they are trying to plant bomb or trying to defend? And then you would approach that situation based on what you, either you would do or what most people do. Now, you, the only thing about that is you got to be a little bit careful because if you're playing against good people in Search and Destroy, then they're not going to play like everybody else. A good Search and Destroy team, what they are going to do is they are going to play different. They're going to play in the ra most random and weird spots to catch you off guard. They're going to have like these cheeky, unconventional plays just to catch you off guard. See, that's what separates a good Search and Destroy team from a bad Search and Destroy team. Bad Search and Destroy teams, they usually just play Search and Destroy like uh, the normal people. Good Search and Destroy team would make risky pushes. They would challenge those um, gunfights that no other, but nobody else would do. They would try different weird strats. They would set up in the weird spots. Now let's move on to setting up and playing well with your teammates. Now setting up and playing well with your teammates is equally as important as playing smart. When you are going to set up in a position with your teammates, you have to decide what are you trying to achieve in setting up in this position. You need to figure out whether you're playing for a pick, and by pick I mean whether you're trying to get first blood, trying to make sure that you take the advantage, making it a three versus four, your team being the four. You also need to figure out whether you guys want to play aggressively or passively as a team. Now playing passively, you are going to just sit back, let the enemy do what they want, and you are going to try and get a pick, get that advantage. Now with that advantage, then you can go from there and adapt to the situation. If they push up B, you get one guy from their team, then you're up four to three, then they're gonna try and play a little bit more passively. But since you have that extra guy, you can play a little bit more aggressively and kind of like figure out where they are and kind of like surround them. Now playing aggressively, you have to be careful because it's a risk and reward thing. You and your teammates risk dying, you risk leaving other teammates exposed, and you even risk like losing the round and costing the round. Now, the reward of playing aggressively is you can catch the enemy off guard. You can get a, you can get a pick or you can get an easy one or two kills. Get the advantage for your teammate of having more t more people alive on your team, and then run back. Or you can just play full on a force aggressively with your team. But the thing about that is, if you're going to play aggressively, you're going to want to communicate with your teammates how you're going to play aggressively. Whether it's going to be a couple of you guys playing aggressively or uh, the whole team playing aggressively. Now, the best way to catch another team off guard is for everybody on your team to push the same way and play aggressively and just try and catch anybody you can off guard. Now, this is where you see fast rounds come come into play. Where if like the other team decides to play aggressively and you guys have decided to play aggressively and you both run into each other and you just have like a big clash a situation like that right there is all about gunfights and that's where your gun skill comes into play your individual gunfights are more important than ever in there because your teammates are tied up trying to trying to get the other guys so they're not going to be able to necessarily help you the clip I'm about to show you guys is a clip that I made the other night playing Infection Search and Destroy. Me and my friends got a late night UMG match and these kids ended up being pretty decent but we ended up uh, coming on top in the series 
So this clip that I'm showing you guys right now, we decided to make a passive aggressive mid push and try and get B control through mid. So right here we have mid map control and B control. So what I decide to do is I decide to try and go get bomb down so we can uh, drag them out of wherever they are sitting at. So what ends up happening is my teammate gets killed while trying to protect me. So I get off bomb and try to get away from bomb because there are two guys on the other side. Now, me trying to get away from bomb exposed my t other teammate because he was trying to cover me so that I can get away from bomb safely. And then a guy came from behind him and killed him. So what I did was I ended up getting the trade and then immediately backed up and turned around because I knew there was two guys on the other side because my, my teammate had called the other guy. So, so I aim in and try to get a another kill right here, but it doesn't go too well. So what I end up doing is I try to flash these guys so I can attempt to run in there and kill both of them. Now, in doing this, I ended up exposing myself and almost died. Right here, this guy was was blind and he had no clue what he was doing, so I got the easy kill off of him. Then right after I killed him, I knew the other guy was going to challenge because he was going to try and kill me while I was distracted with his teammate. And so I just jumped up and killed him. But yeah, guys, so this is the end of the video. I plan on making more of these, uh, probably a little more instructional on like my, like thoughts on how I approach certain situations in Search and Destroy. Um, but yeah, so if you like this video, please drop a like, drop a comment, tell me what you thought about the video, and subscribe. It's your boy JP, and I'll see you guys next time.